Joining us now to discuss the REITs market is John Kim, analyst at BMO Capital Markets. John, before we move on to the other areas, I want to spend another moment in office because, yeah, sure, I mean, I guess part of this is remote and a hybrid work. People don't need offices as much as they used to. But real estate is local, right? So are there some markets where office is a bit different? And because of this oversupply, are there perhaps deals to be had in some areas? I would say the short answer to that is not really. I mean, <laughs> office overall is, is, is tough. I mean, everybody hates office. Nobody wants to come back to work. Employers want to bring people back to work, but it's a lot harder than, than we thought. I mean, New York is a more diversified economy. It's not as reliant as tech. I think tech has been the one uh, sector that's been very, very difficult to bring workers back. So I, I, we're more optimistic than in New York and in a city like Boston than we are in, in San Francisco and Seattle. But overall, the office, we're just still in this period where we just don't know how bad it's going to be. Okay, now let's talk about industrial REITs, which you do like. And we just saw some, some numbers, durable goods uh, today, uh, and, and even Fastenal's monthly sales, like people are still making stuff out there. Is that why the yeah. industrial REITs look relatively good? I think so. The fundamentals are really fantastic in, in industrial. We're talking about 2% vacancy rate. The industrial REITs just reported 34% rental growth on leases they signed during the quarter and 64% mark to market. So if rents don't move at all, their rents will go up uh, as leases roll by 64%. So there's a lot of embedded growth in the industrial REITs, and that's why we like companies like Pearl Lodges and Rexford, which are leaders in, in the industrial REIT sector. What makes them leaders? What are they doing that's better than the, the rest of the competition? Um, I mean, a lot of it is market selection. Rexford is focused in Southern California, which is the strongest and largest market and a gateway to uh, you know, a very strong economy overall with very little new supply risks. And Prologis is the global leader. They're a, a massive developer and fund manager, great relationships overall. And so market selection, I think development uh, expertise and knowing their markets is uh, why they're both very good companies. Now, residential REITs may be in the middle, right? Like in, in some of them yeah. are doing pretty well some of them not. Uh, in this rising interest rate environment, what's the impact on residential REITs? I mean, I imagine for apartment buildings, it's not bad because people can't afford to move out and buy their own place. So that keeps uh, occupancy pretty high. Apartments, you're absolutely right, John. Apartments is a great business. Uh, we're talking about companies with some of the best balance sheets and the, some of the best uh, run companies uh, in our industry. We're a little bit cautious in apartments right now, though, because we're forecasting uh, BMO as a bank, the unemployment rate goes up to 4.9%. And if we see massive job losses occur, which hasn't really happened yet, then demand's going to taper off. And at the same time, we're seeing new supply risks in markets, uh, particularly in the Sun Belt. So that demand supply uh, imbalance may um, play out over the remainder of this year. But so far, the, uh, the REITs have held up very well. So do you play that by looking at residential REITs that have uh, inventory near where the industrial REITs that are smart are doing well? I mean, I imagine, right, if you've got factories and, and manufacturing facilities that are doing well, the people there probably aren't going to lose their jobs. That's an interesting thought. We haven't really thought about it that way. We're, we're, we, thought, we think more in terms of East Coast versus, or Coastal versus Sunbelt. Sunbelt is where you're seeing a lot more supply risk currently. Um, but look, if we have a soft landing, if we see the economy continue to hum, rates come down uh, and inflation comes down as well, this sector will rip. Uh, that's just not our view today, but certainly, you know, that could change. How important is data in the, the area of REITs? And you, you talked about it a little bit before, what makes Prologis and Rexford stand out. But um, when we think about the advantages that some of these companies are going to get going forward if they use data well, uh, I, I wonder if it's kind of like oil and gas in a way. <laughs> like, are you really good at finding the right spots? I think so. I think real estate, if you look back 20, 30 years, it's all about imperfect information. That's how landlords get the advantage over their tenants. The data is a lot more prevalent today, but if you have companies that can analyze the data and understand trends better than others, then I think they have a real advantage uh, over, the, over the competitors.